you. Hi, I'm Andy Jones, content editor for Plaid's online education program, Let's Paint. And I'd like to welcome you to our Friday YouTube live stream. So in addition to color theory, we're also going to sneak in a little bit of brush stroke work for you. So last week we did uh, a series of uh, round brush strokes and today we're going to be doing flat brush strokes. So I am using colors from our Let's Paint Live kit, which is available at walmart.com. It is a set of 24 beautiful colors and a great set of brushes. It is our 10-piece premium artist variety pack of brushes. So you've got all the brushes and all the paint you need to paint along with our Let's Paint Live program. So as I mentioned, we are going to be doing some flat brush strokes today. So I have a couple of flat brushes and I'm using half inch flat brushes today for demonstration purposes. And I'm going to start out using a little bit of Brilliant Ultramarine, which is a very, very vibrant uh, blue color. And folk art paint, when it comes out of the bottle, is a very rich and creamy um, consistency. So if you were to scoop it up on your palette knife, you can see that it will drop off very, very slowly. And that is great for all sorts of applications, but not perfect for stroke work. So I'm going to add some water to my ultramarine blue and mix it in with my palette knife to thin the consistency down so that the paint will flow off of my brush for brush stroke work. So I'm going to add a little bit of water and mix it in. And then I'll add a little bit more water and I'm going to thin my paint down till it is the consistency of bird poop. That way I know that I am ready to do stroke work. So I'm adding water and after doing strokes for 30 years, I can pretty much tell when we're going to be at about the right consistency. But I'm going to show you how to check your paint so scoop it up on your palette knife and it should plop off instantly. Mine still feels a little bit stiff. So I'm going to add a little bit more water. And water is probably the best thing to thin your paint down with for doing uh, stroke work or practicing how to use your flat brushes. All right, so let's check this consistency again. Uh, it plops right off and we're in good shape uh, to do some stroke work. Now, in order to do good strokes, you are going to need your paint to be at the proper consistency, and we've just done that, and then you're going to need a brush that is in good shape. So every time you use your brushes, make sure that you clean your brushes thoroughly uh, using warm soapy water, and get the paint out of the brush where the bristles meet the ferrule. That the ferrule is the metal part of your brush, and you want to make sure that where the bristles go into the ferrule, you don't let any paint dry and accumulate. That will ruin your flat brush. So we are going to load our flat brush with this beautiful, brilliant ultramarine color. And we are going to make our first stroke. So I have some cardstock here that I'm going to be painting on. I'm using cardstock instead of like regular copy paper so that it doesn't curl up quite as bad. But we are going to do what's called a basic stroke. So I'm going to set my brush down, I'm going to touch the brush to the surface, and I'm going to pull the brush toward me. That's a very, very basic stroke, uh, and it's about the width of the flat brush. I was not applying a lot of pressure to the brush. So again, a basic stroke with the flat brush, touch the brush to the surface, and pull toward you. All right. Now, just to get you ready for some things that are going to be demonstrated a little bit later on, let's just touch our brush to the surface and apply a lot of pressure to the brush. And you can see that I can make a basic stroke that is much wider than the width of my brush simply by applying pressure to the brush. So it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, just a basic stroke. So you should get used to doing them with no pressure on the brush or with quite a bit of pressure on the brush. Now, that's using the flat surface of the flat brush. And now I want to talk to you about using the very end of the flat brush, which is called the chisel edge of the brush. So now I'm going to stand the brush up so that the handle is pointed directly up at the ceiling. And I'm going to tip this to the side a little bit so you can see actually what I'm doing. 
and I'm going to touch the brush to the surface of my paper and apply no pressure and pull toward me and I can make a very narrow stroke. So again, handle toward the ceiling, no pressure, touch the brush down and pull toward you and you can make a series of what we call a line stroke and this is just applying no pressure on the chisel edge of the brush. So you want to be able to do a flat stroke and a line stroke so that you are in control of how much pressure you put on any given surface of this brush. So again, handle toward the ceiling and I'm resting my hand on the surface so that I can control the pressure on the brush. So touch the bristles to the surface, apply no pressure and make a nice gentle pull. So once you've gotten the hang of how to do that, you can also do it horizontally and you can do it starting at either end. So you just need to work on being proficient with the brush so that you can go right to left, left to right, or start and pull down toward you, or you can even start at the bottom and push away from you if you want to. But being in control of the brush is what we're really talking to you about today. So I'm going to set this piece of paper aside. We may come back to it a little bit later. But we are now going to, um, we're going to make a brush that looks like a comma. So a comma is just a curved um, mark. So when I set my brush down on the surface, I'm going to angle my brush so that the bristles are at this point. I'm going to pull the brush in this direction and we're going to end here at this mark. So our brush stroke is starts at one point and ends at the same point. So I'm going to ask Emily, who is here in the studio with me, if she will look on my desk for a piece of a little roll of masking tape, because I want to show you something with the masking tape uh, while we are doing some of our brush stroke work. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how we form a comma stroke. So again, I'm going to angle my brush toward the corner of the paper. I'm going to touch my brush to the surface. I'm going to apply pressure on the flat surface of the brush. I'm going to pull. I'm going to begin lifting pressure on the brush. And I'm going to drag the brush and pull the brush to a very nice point. So Emily has arrived with my tape. Thank you so much, Emily. Appreciate you doing that. I don't know why after 30 years I cannot remember to have some masking tape when I'm teaching brush stroke work. Happy to help, Andy. Uh, oh, great. All right, so Emily will also be letting me know if you all have any questions, feel free to type them in the uh, chat box or the comment box. All right, so now that I have a little uh, masking tape flag on my paintbrush, I want you to pay special attention to the, flat, to the fact that this flag will not wave while I make a brush stroke. I'm not turning the brush in my fingers. If I were turning the brush in my fingers, you would see the flag move. But I'm going to set the brush down, I'm going to touch the brush to the surface, I'm going to apply pressure, I'm going to pull, I'm going to lift, I'm going to drag the brush to a point. That flag did not move. Let's do that again so we drive this point home. All right, touch the brush to the surface, apply pressure on the flat surface of the brush, pull, lift, and drag the brush to a point. The flag does not move. That is probably one of the most important things that you can learn about uh, making this particular stroke. And while you may never paint anything that requires a beautifully executed stroke like this, being able to manipulate the brush is what we are worried about today. You want to be able to make that brush do what you want it to do. When you have it in your mind, what you want to paint, if you can make the brush do that, it's so much easier for you. So once again, we're going to touch the brush to the surface. We're going to apply pressure on the brush. We're going to pull. We're going to lift. And we're going to drag to a point. And Emily's got a question. So uh, yes, we have a question about what is the best way to clean the ferrule? The best way to clean your brush is to take the brush, um, I wipe it out on a paper towel, uh, kind of rinse it out in my little uh, basin, and then when I'm done at the end of the day, I go to a sink and I put the brush under warm running water. I use some liquid dish soap 
and I work the bristle. Are we still overhead? Okay. So I work the brush. Let me get a brush without any paint in it. I work the brush in the palm of my hand like this, just back and forth, back and forth with some soap and then rinse it under the running water to make sure that I'm getting the paint residue out of it. And then you could do a couple of different things. Um, I like to put a little squirt of hand sanitizer or germ gel in the palm of my hand and I work the bristles of the brush in that and that will get a surprising amount of paint out of the brush that you thought was clean. And then once I've done that, then again under the running water, just work that bristles in the palm of my hand and rinse and that should get all of the uh, hand sanitizer out of the brush and then I form the bristles back into a nice shape with my hand and I leave them flat to dry. So that's how I clean a brush. Okay, so let's do a comma stroke going the other direction. It is the exact same motion except we're starting with our hand in a different position and it may seem very awkward to you the first few times you do this and you will notice that you have a better direction. Some people paint them going to the left better, some people paint them going to the right better, but you do have a better direction, so don't be surprised at that. So we're going to touch the brush to the surface, we're going to apply pressure on the brush, we're going to pull, we're going to lift, and we're going to drag the brush back to a nice chisel edge. And again, the brush does not turn in my hand. I'm guiding the brush where I want it to go, but I am not twisting the brush in my hand. So we'll do another comma stroke in this direction. Again, it's all about just moving the brush in that comma-like motion, but no twisting, no turning of the bristles in your hand. Whew, it's a lot of talking about <laughs> A simple brush stroke, but I think it's really important that you master um, how to um, operate or manipulate your brush. So in addition to our comma strokes, uh, we can do a stroke that's called an S stroke. And it's very similar to a comma stroke as we will be using the chisel edge and the flat surface of the brush. So let's notice our flag as we do this. So I'm going to stand the brush up on the chisel edge. I'm going to touch the brush to the surface, I'm going to pull, I'm going to slide and apply pressure on the brush, and then I'm going to release pressure and slide back up on the chisel edge, creating a graceful S-like stroke. And this is teaching you how to vary the pressure on your brush while you are moving the brush. So let's do that again. Stand the brush up on the chisel edge, touch the brush to the surface, apply pressure, slide, pressure on the flat surface of the brush, lift and slide back up on the chisel edge, forming a very graceful S-shaped stroke. We do not want to do this kind of abrupt zigzag stuff. So we're not sliding, we're not doing a flat brush stroke and then another slide. That's not an S-stroke. You want to be able to keep this gradual uh, curvature going. And Emily's got another question for me. So do you have any advice for people that find it difficult to go from right to left if they are right-handed? Practice. I mean, it sounds very trite to say that, but I am a right-handed person and I can do a brush stroke from the right side and I can do a brush stroke from the left side. It's all a matter of practice. So comma strokes to the right, comma strokes to the left, S strokes to the right, S strokes to the left. If I can do it, you can do it. All right, so I'm going to set this aside and we're going to do another um, kind of stroke. This stroke we'll call a U stroke. So we're going to stand the brush up on the chisel edge and again, there's no twisting and turning of this flag, okay? So I'm going to stand the brush on the chisel edge, I'm going to touch the brush to the surface, I'm going to slide down, I'm going to apply pressure and I'm forming a U shape and I will lift back up on the chisel edge of the brush. Okay, so that U, I mean, these strokes are pretty much what they sound like, the comma stroke, the S stroke, the U stroke. So we'll do another U stroke and again, it's moving the brush and controlling the pressure on the brush. We're not twisting or turning the brush in our hands. Touch the brush to the surface, 
slide, apply pressure as we make the U, and then lift back up on the chisel edge of the brush. And we could do that upside down as well. Again, it's all about sliding and the amount of pressure that we put on the brush. We can call it a C stroke if we do it to the side. We can do it to the other side. It's important to be able to make the brush do whatever you want your brush to do. Okay, before we move on into some other things, I do want to show you that there is a stroke where you do turn the brush in your fingers. All right, so instead of holding the brush like a pencil, I'm going to grip the brush between my fingers. So thumb on one side, fingers on the other side, and you can see that I can turn the brush. You see the flag moving. So I'm going to set the brush down, and I'm going to pivot the brush around an anchor point, and I'm creating a half circle stroke. That time I did pivot the brush in my fingers to give the brush a half circle. And I can do that the other way as well. So you need to be able to uh, pivot the brush between your fingers in order to make this kind of half circle shape. Now let's put out some Dutch Aqua on our palette, which is a very lovely lighter blue color. And I'm going to do brush stroke work, so I need to thin this color down with some water so that I can get it to the correct fluid consistency for stroke work. And sometimes the work that we do on our palette takes longer but is more important than the work we do on our surface that we're decorating. So Emily, let me know if anybody else has any questions as we're moving through these brush strokes. Sure, so going back to cleaning your brush, uh, there are some people who I will not name that, uh -oh. <laughs> that might have uh, accidentally left some paint on their brush and it dried in the ferrule. Yes. And they wanted to know if you had recommendations on how to maybe soften that dried paint and be able to revive that brush that has been <laughs> maybe somewhat abused. Yes, and I do have, um, I've got a lot of different things that you can do. Uh, Plaid manufactures a product called Brush Plus, and it is a very good uh, cleaner for your brushes. And you can work some Brush Plus into the brush and really kind of um, saturate the bristles with that, set it aside for several hours, then come back to cleaning the brush and see if that will have loosened uh, some of that paint. That will probably get a good bit of paint out of your brush. Uh, if you are impatient, uh, you can use some uh, rubbing alcohol. will help get uh, some of that paint out of the brush as well. And uh, you might need to look a little bit hard at the drugstore to find most uh, rubbing alcohol is 70% isopropyl alcohol. And you really want to look for the stuff that's 90%. So if it's not on the shelf, uh, you may need to ask behind the counter, ask the druggist for 90% um, isopropyl alcohol. That will get a lot of paint out of your brush. If that doesn't work, the next thing is to go to acetone, which is also fingernail polish remover. Keeping in mind, if you have a lovely manicure, the acetone will remove the lovely manicure and quite possibly your acrylic nails as well. But it will help cut the uh, acrylic paint and get that out of the brush. So those are the best uh, tips to use. So um, clean your brushes. If you forget, then uh, some Brush Plus. If not that, then some uh, rubbing alcohol or acetone will really help to get the paint out of your brush. Thank you, Andy. And I just had a comment that somebody uh, mentioned that they really like the tip about putting the masking tape on the brush mm -hmm. because that should help them be able to execute these strokes more effectively. Yes, and if you are, um, I always think it's fun to paint with a friend. And if you're practicing your stroke work, your friend will let you know immediately if your flag is moving on your brush. All right, I'm going to put two colors on this brush at the same time and it's a technique called double loading. So I'm going to sneak the brush into the Brilliant Ultramarine, and I'm going to come to a spot on the palette, and I've flipped my brush over. 
So I've got this dark color here, and then I'm going to just move some of my Dutch Aqua over so I've got a clean edge, and I'm going to pay close attention to what I'm doing, and I will sneak that edge of the flat brush into the paint, and then move to this clean spot on the palette to blend this color into the bristles of the brush by making a series of short pulls in the same spot. Don't start dancing all over your palette and making a dab here and a dab there and a dab there. All that's doing is painting your palette. And what we want to do is to load our brush with the paint. So one spot, paying attention to what you're doing, and we will have two beautiful blues on our brush in just a moment. It takes a while to get your brush completely loaded with these two colors of paint. But I just pay attention to what's happening on the palette. And then we can, if I've got this loaded with enough paint, we can do a beautiful brush stroke. So let's start up on the chisel edge of our brush. We'll slide, we'll apply pressure to our brush, we'll lift up, and we'll slide and apply pressure to our brush and you can create a beautiful ribbon effect. And this way we've got our color that graduates from the Dutch Aqua over into the Brilliant Ultramarine. And I was starting to run out of paint on my brush, so I need to go back and load my brush up with even more paint. It takes a lot of paint on your brush to do big, long brush strokes. All right, so we'll try this again. So we'll slide, we'll apply pressure, we'll lift, and we'll slide and apply pressure, and we'll lift, and we'll slide and apply pressure. And I'm just starting to run out of paint. That last one just doesn't have quite enough paint in the center. But with a very nice load of paint, you can create beautiful brush strokes like that, almost a ribbon of strokes loading up my brush with even more paint and we'll do a few more of these little brush strokes but showing you how to do them with a double loaded brush we'll do a big comma stroke and these two-tone strokes are absolutely beautiful we have a lot of people in the comments saying that they love the brush work that you're doing right now well i appreciate that and i hope that they will spend time practicing their brushstroke work so that theirs looks just like mine or just like theirs, but they can do it easily and without any sort of frustration or problems. So it's something that I know if you want to uh, be a good painter or improve your skills, mastering flat brushstroke work is something that you must do. And if you have the desire to paint, I know that you can do this uh, beautifully. Yes, can, uh, Andy, you're calling all of these viewers out um, to be able to work on their brushwork, and <laughs> I'm sure the pressure is on. Well, it's one of those things that um, I, I love to eat and I love to cook, and I know that practicing your brush strokes is like having good knife skills in the kitchen. If you can't chop an onion, then you need to work on your knife skills. You've got to practice so that you get good at chopping an onion so that that's not the hard part about cooking. And controlling your brush shouldn't be the hard part about painting. If you go back and you master your S strokes, your half circle strokes, your U strokes, your C strokes, your comma strokes, your line strokes, and your basic strokes, all of these things put together make beautiful stroke work and mastering uh, the flat brush is essential in being a good painter. So sorry if I had to call you out on it, but I think it's very important to uh, put in the time and effort and to practice doing these brush strokes. And I've been doing this for a very long time, but I do know that when I get ready to make my brush do something for me, I know that my brush will respond because I have done the practice and I can make the brush do what I want it to do. So that is a quick little primer for you on some uh, brush stroke work with a flat brush. Again, I'm using colors from the 
Let's Paint Live kit, which is available at walmart.com. And the next time we're together, we will be using the liner brush. So I'll show you a few tips and tricks on how to get the most out of your liner brush.